All right, I think we can begin. Okay, Maharaj. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarabhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Nectar of Instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. So, uh, yesterday we discussed about uh, Upadesha Saram. Who would like to tell us what is the meaning of Upadesha Saram? When Rupa Goswami said this was Upadesha Saram. What was he talking about? Krishna Vijay Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Rupa Goswami was talking about that one should engage 24 hours in chanting, remembering the transcendental name, form, quality, pastimes of the Lord. Yes, thank you. So this was Upadesha Saram and looking over the objectives, I see there's a couple of points about Upadesha Saram. We, one of the objectives was to, to discuss the relevance of Srila Rupa Goswami's Upadesha Saram for ISKCON. Discuss the, the relevance you know, how do we want to apply this in ISKCON? Do we want everybody should come to ISKCON and they should just sit down and chant and discuss and just sit down and hear about Krishna? Is that the mood in ISKCON? No. Yeah, someone like, would like to respond? We have some hands up. Hareshwari Mataji would like to respond to that. Hareshwari Mataji. Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So in Iskon we are teaching movement, but uh, so we cannot just sit at one place and do uh, like remember Krishna. But what we can do is whatever we do, we can Krishna and center. So if, even if like some Krishnas they are working, so so can I ask you a question? Do you think, uh, you know, if, if we go out preaching every day, will we still be able to go to Goloka? Or is it only for people who go and sit down in Vrindavan and think of Krishna in Vrindavan that can go to Goloka? No, the preachers also go to Goloka. Because we are spreading the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes. Yes, it's a fact actually, because, we, because we're taking, if we do the missionary work on behalf of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can come to Radha and Krishna. It's not that we have to be just simply in Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, the mood in Vaikuntha is Dasharas. So, certainly, Sankirtan, we're engaged in service. But Sankirtan 
is a very, very powerful and purifying transcendental service. Because the mood of Sankirtan is to give Krishna to others. We try our best to distribute literature and to introduce people to Krishna consciousness. It's, we often find that people People think that we're simply businessmen when we go and sell our books. But actually the distribution of Prabhupada's literature is the act of the greatest compassion. So we try our best to bring people to Krishna consciousness. We like to introduce people to Prabhupada's literature. And of course we try to engage them in Krishna's service, so we also take contributions and solicit donations for their benefit, not just simply for us. Money is not for us, but for the benefit of others. We go out and try to distribute books and try to bring people into Krishna consciousness. So. We should also point out that before going to sit down in Vrindavan, one has to have a qualification. What should, do you remember what is the qualification to actually go and sit down in Vrindavan and chant the holy name and remember Krishna? Anyone? I'm not hearing anything. Am I muted? Oh, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, can you hear us? Just now only. I couldn't hear you for oh, okay. a few minutes there. I thought, I thought something went wrong because you went very quiet. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so Krishna Vijay Prabhu responded to your question. Prabhu, can you just repeat what you said? Sure Prabhu. Thank you. Uh, I said Maharaj, uh, we have discussed this point like uh, Narutam Das Thakur mentioned that uh, like one who become free from this you know a sense object and purifies his heart then he is qualified to go to Vrindavan. right thank you yes in other words we have to be 
probably gone, they probably have to pass through, already gone through Anartha Navriti and come to Nishta and gone on even to Ruchi, the state of taste, to actually qualify herself. And in addition to that, something else important? Anybody else like to contribute in this? One, one important point? Before going to Vrindavan? Anybody? There's no hands up. No, well, the point is, you have to get permission from your spiritual master. You don't go independently. You have to get sanction from senior devotees. Otherwise, it won't be good, it won't work. You know, if, you're, if, if your spiritual master doesn't encourage it, then you shouldn't do it. It's, it's important to have the blessings of the senior Vaishnavas, it should be confirmed. So that, that's uh, an important point. If you don't have the blessings from your spiritual master, and from other Vaishnavas, then you go there to Vrindavan, it will be difficult for you because you go to Vrindavan, you have to take shelter of a senior devotee. And that senior devotee should also encourage your faith in your own spiritual master. And so it, it, we have to be very careful Usually going to Vrindavan, it's somewhere like the end of life, you know, you're preparing to leave the body. And Prabhupada said, you spend your whole life preaching, and then at the end of life you go and can sit down in Vrindavan and read the books of the Goswamis. So the end of life is for sitting down in Vrindavan. That's a good place to go. Okay, so Prabhupada's mood about the um, Upadesha Saram. Uh, then, okay, we're going to go on now to text number n nine. Oh, oh, well, wait, text number eight. There were some points in text number eight, some other points, text number eight. Uh, the appropriate stages of hearing and Krishna Smarana. That was uh, explained there in the purport, the different stages, how you begin to meditate. It becomes internal, you're meditating on the pastimes of Krishna from the chanting of the mantra, chanting of Hare Krishna mantra. Gradually your mind becomes absorbed in pastimes of Krishna and you meditate on the pastimes of Krishna. So the Goswamis, they could do that kind of thing. It's not really very possible for everyone. It's a very advanced stage of Krishna consciousness. Alright, so we'll go into text number, text number 9. I think, um, Ananda Leela, Mataji, did you have something you wanted to ask there? C could Mataji just ask you a quick question? Yes. Okay, Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Um, I just have a, wanted to clarify about this um, Upadesha Saram. Like it said, that, um, how the relevance of Rupa Goswami's Upadesha Saram for ISKCON. Can it be? Um, said that uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, like, like uh, as the discussion was like, I mean, we're not chanting 24 hours a day, but Pra Srila Prabhupada gave us a program where uh, from the morning until we go to bed at night, he gave us a full program, not just 16, chanting 16, you know, ra uh, chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But, you know, like attending the Mangala Arati and the full morning program he gave, Bhagavatam class and, you know, like cooking for the deities and then book distribution uh, and, you know, preaching, all these uh, 
like all, all the different uh, uh, mm, yeah, like uh, the uh, things which he added uh, in the devotional service could that be said as that the devotees are then engaged 24 hours a day but not like chanting Hare Krishna for the 24 hours but they are engaged in various other activities oh absolutely yes devotees are get engaged fully the whole day in activities for the pleasure of Krishna. So uh, that's the, the mood in the Krishna conscious society as an international organization with centers around the world. So people are working in so many different ways for the movement to propagate Krishna consciousness and to expand the movement. And so you could say they're in the mood of Vrindavan. The, uh, the Krishna, you know, that uh, Upadesha Saram, it's not that you actually have to go there to Vrindavan, but wherever we are, wherever we're working in the service of Krishna, we can create the Vrindavan atmosphere. You see, these places, the Prabhupada's purpose, one of the, one of the uh, principles which was there in the beginning of our society was to establish holy places around the world, in different countries. And so you can create the mood of Vrindavan in whatever place we are in. We have pictures of Govardhan Hill and the deities from Vrindavan and you can have also Tosi Maharani and, and then we have our scriptures. And so the mood of Vrindavan is there. The, the same mood, although we're not physically present in Vrindavan, but the, the mood of Vrindavan. And we see even just down the road here from Mayapur, at the, at the birthplace of, uh, no, well, at the Chaitanya Mat, the temple established by Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, there's a Govardhan hill and there's a Radhakund. You know, he created them for the pleasure of the devotees. You know, this is Radhakund, this is Shyamakund, this is Govardhan Hill. And so he created these things simply to create the holy dam there. Although it's, this is Mayapur and Govardhan Hill is in Vrindavan, he created a Govardhan Hill here in Mayapur. And he created also his Radhakund. So they couldn't have the mood. And there's many temples like that around the world. They've done similar things. I think devotees in Ireland, they also have, you know, some grounds, you know, they have some tree. Yeah, so they've created a, like a Vrindavan there. And we know, of course, there's new Vrindavan in America and temples on the... Govardhanika yeah. village as well, where Brother Nath Swami has recreated all the seven temples of Vrindavan. And at 6 p.m. and he's also created a Ganga, a Yamuna, sorry, and then you can actually go and do Yamuna Aarti there at 6 p.m. and go and visit the little temples of Vrindavan and go over the hill you can do a Parikrama. It's quite amazing. Yeah, we don't need to go to Vrindavan. We can have our own Vrindavan. Wherever we are, it's the presence of devotees that make a holy place. Yeah. When the, the devotees come there, then they make that place holy by their activities, by their chanting, by their worship of the deity. It becomes a holy place. I think that's there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira was speaking to Vidura and he told Vidura, Vidura had come back after visiting holy places. And he, Maharaj Yudhisthira said to Vidura that you're, you're, you create the holy place because you carry the Lord in your heart. Therefore, wherever you go, you make that place a holy place. So devotees, where you have a congregation of devotees, then that will become a very sanctified holy place. Right? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the question. All right, so I'll share the screen and we'll go on to text number nine. Uh, yeah. Here you can see 
the verse. Who would like to chant the Sanskrit for us? Any of you are good in reciting nicely? What about um, well, Krishna Vijay Prabhu has his hand raised, or he did that. <laughs> he went down now. All right, do you want to go ahead, Krishna Vijay Prabhu? Actually, I had one question. Uh, okay. What the question, like Maharaj uh, asked us. So maybe if Maharaj is ready to take the question, I can. If not, maybe later. All right, let's take it then. Uh, Maharaj, uh, like we said, that once we become uh, free from anarthas, and then we come to the Nishta, you know, our Ruchi stage, then we are eligible to go to Vrindavan. At the same time, the permission of the spiritual master is required for us to go. But sometimes we see that spiritual master, uh, though the disciple is not qualified to go and stay in Dham, but sometimes he sends them so that uh, so that they can stay in the association of devotees and uh, become qualified or for higher purpose, like for some kind of service, so how to see this both things? Well, the spiritual master has some plan. He understands the mind of his disciple. And so he understands that, this, that, him, that if he sends him to the Holy Dham, it will be good for him, it will help him to progress. Okay. The instruction of the spiritual master is very important. That's the point. The spiritual master gives an instruction to the disciple, then they should take it very seriously. And certainly, spiritual master must have a reason why he's doing it. And we shouldn't question. We shouldn't say, oh, he's not qualified. But the spiritual master knows what is actually good for the disciple. And he gives the instruction. He's also giving blessings along with the instruction. So the disciple can go there and get association and, you know, people go to Vrindavan and they're, they're, sometimes they're not the same anymore. They, they really advance a lot, become very serious in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So we, we cannot question, that's the point. The spiritual master orders the disciple, the disciple should do it should take up that instruction. They may not be able to do it immediately. There may be some time lag over it, but at some point may have to, he has to do it. All right, who's going to chant number nine? Are you going to chant Krishna Vijay Prabhu? No, I've got Indulekha Kripa. Not that he might want to chant. Oh, really? Indulekha yeah. Kripa, please? Yes, Prabhu. All right, very nice. Thank you. Can you read the translation for us? The transcendental world, because it does not appear here, superior to Mutra Puri is the transcendental knowledge of Vrindavana because of the Krasalila pastime, and superior to the knowledge of It was created by the Sri Krishna and was the highest loving and above all, the excellent Sri Radha Kunda stands supreme. Krishna, where then is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve the Sri Radha Kunda, which is situated at the foot of Murdana Hill? Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. So Rupa Goswami has described here something of a hierarchy between different holy places. We are devotees and our philosophy is Achintya Veda Veda Tadva. 
one and different. So they're all holy places, but they're different. Some places are more spiritually powerful than others. Right? Mayavadi, impersonalists, they think everything is one. Everything is one. Nothing is real in the material world, nothing is real. Oh, no, there's only the, the oneness. But we see a lot of variety. And with variety there are differences. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy is being also presented in a way here. So Prabhupada begins talking about the spiritual world, how it's three-fourths, material world is only one-fourth, a tiny fraction compared to the spiritual world. So spiritual world is naturally superior to the material world because the material world is created and destroyed, it's subject to time. The spiritual world is eternal. So then, so, however, superior to the spiritual world is Mathura, because the personality of Godhead takes birth there. Mathura is there's a, there's a district Mathura and there's also the town Mathura. Or maybe it's a city, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's the place of Lord Krishna's birth. And we have a nice temple there the, at the Janmastan, at the place where Lord Krishna appeared, which was, of course, at that time in the prison house of King Kamsa. So Mathura is a very special holy place. Lord Krishna, we say, we read in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna is perfect in Dwarka, he's more perfect in Mathura, and he's most perfect in Vrindavan. So, Rupa Goswami is establishing something, the hierarchy here. Then he said, after Mathura, Mathura is very pure because Krishna takes birth there, but better than that is the forest of Vrindavan. And there are different forests. Krishna performs Rasa Leela in different places. Sometimes at Govardhan, sometimes in Vrindavan itself. So these different places where Krishna performs Rasa Leela, they're very, very sacred places, very holy places. But even higher than these forests of Vrindavan is the Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill is described as the very best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. He's the very best. He's called, the gopis describe him as Hari Dasavarya. Right? In Srimad Bhagavatam, the gopis are chanting the song, uh, different prayer and they mention how Govardhan Hill is the greatest devotee of Lord Hari because he's performing so many wonderful services on behalf of the Lord. Not only on behalf of the Lord, he gives pleasure to the cows and all the devotees, because in Govardhan Hill you get grass for the cows, and Govardhan will produce fruits and vegetables and flowers. There's also waterfalls on the Govardhan Hill, and the water can be drunk by the cowherd boys and by the cows themselves also. Nice fresh water running down the banks of the Govardhan Hill. There were caves also in the Govardhan Hill, and in the caves Krishna could take shelter from the heat or the rain. With all the cowherd boys they could go into the caves and protect themselves. So Govardhan Hill is very wonderful, but even more even on a higher level than Govardhan Hill, is Radhakund. So we'll hear why Radhakund is so special. Mentioned here, just uh, to read on the bottom of the page here, on, on my screen, it said, uh, Radhakund, at the foot of Govardhan, is superior to all, because it is there that love of Krishna overflows. Advanced devotees prefer to reside at Radhakund because this place is the site 
of many memories of the eternal loving affairs between Krishna and Radharani. Rati Vilasa. So, then Prabhupada goes on to describe how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discovered the Radha Kund. Mahaprabhu had come to visit Vrindavan and at that time, uh, the, uh, of course, uh, Lokana Swami, Bhugarbha Swami, they were the first ones to come to Vrindavan. So they were there and then Rupa and Sanatan also came. So Mahaprabhu came to visit the devotees who he had sent there and he asked them, where is Radha Kund? And nobody knew, nobody. So Mahaprabhu then went and investigated different places and he found out there was a small village nearby, I think it was named something like Aristagram. Aridgram. Huh? Aridgram. Aridgram. So Krishna had killed Aristasur, and because he killed Aristasur, who was in the form of a bull, so Srimati Radharani had requested him to do some atonement and to go and take bath in all the holy rivers. So Lord Chaitanya. Uh, uh, Lord Krishna said, I, I don't need to go to the holy rivers, I will call them all here. So Lord Krishna then ground his heel in the ground and one by one different holy rivers, the personifications of so many different holy rivers appeared and they brought water and they washed the feet of Lord Krishna. So you had Ganga and Yamuna and Saraswati, Narmada, Kaveri, all of these different rivers, they all, the personification of these holy rivers all came and they all carried water from their holy river and they poured it on the feet of Lord Krishna and created the pond. And then Lord Krishna told Srimati Radharani that she should also take a bath and purify herself. So Srimati Radharani and all the gopis, they arranged to bring water from Manasaganga but Krishna saw that it was a great labor for them, so Krishna helped them. And Krishna brought the different holy waters together and created the ponds. So that was 5,000 years ago, but then 500 years ago when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, nobody knew where is Radha Kund. And so Mahaprabhu then discovered it. It was a rice field at the time. But Mahaprabhu found there was a pond there in the rice field and he went there and took his bath there. And people, the local village people were surprised to see this sannyasi, young sannyasi going there taking bath in, his, in the rice field. But Mahaprabhu explained to the devotees, this is Radha Kund. So that land was acquired and gradually they developed and until it, Rupa and, and Raghunath Goswami lived there for a long time, did a lot of meditation and chanting there, had many pastimes at Radha Kund. And Lord Nityananda's wife Janava, she also came there and visited Radha Kund. And uh, gradually the, the, pond, the two Shamakund Radha Kund developed to the present day very beautiful, very nice place. So Lord Chaitanya gave a lot of stress to this Radha Kund. He was so eager to find it. So Rupa Goswami also gave a lot of importance to it because he understood the mood of Lord Chaitanya. That if Lord Chaitanya had taken so much trouble to find it, then certainly it must be very important. And so then Rupa Goswami also came to live for some time there at Radha Kund. All right, so Prabhupada said, no person would, uh, would do so. The importance of Radha Kund, however, cannot be realized by other Vaishnav Sampradayas, nor can persons uninterested 
in the devotional service of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understand the spiritual importance and divine nature of Radha Kund. This Radha Kund is mainly worshipped by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the followers of Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is an important point and this point was a uh, particularly brought out by Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada that he had seen other people come there to Radhakund and he told the devotees, he said, these people are coming to Radhakund simply because of Krishna. They don't understand Srimati Radharani. So it's a special nature of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya that we give a lot of importance to Srimati Radharani because we know she is the Ladini Shakti, the pleasure potency of Lord Sri Krishna and she attracts Krishna. Krishna is Madan Mohan and Radharani is Madan Mohan Mohini that she can attract Krishna. So because Srimati Radharani is getting so much ecstasy and bliss in her service to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna decides himself to become a devotee. He wants to experience this mood of Srimati Radharani. And that's why Lord Krishna comes as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he wants to experience what is called Radha Bhava or Gopi Bhava, the ecstasy of being a gopi or being Srimati Radharani. So this is only understood in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Other people, you will see, they worship Krishna and often they don't have Radha, they just have Krishna deity. They will worship Krishna. And before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were many temples like that. They only had Krishna deities, there was no Radharani. But we know Krishna is never alone. Krishna always has his, he always comes with his devotees, either with Balarama or with Srimati Radharani, like that, or Mother Yashoda. But we don't see Krishna on his own. Prabhupada didn't like those paintings of Krishna where there's only Krishna and some effulgence is coming out of his head. Prabhupada said, this is Mayavadi, this is the impersonal. They see Krishna like that. But we see Krishna with his consort, with his energy, not on his own. So we give great importance to Radha Kund because of Srimati Radharani. And we want to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani. Is this okay? Are there any questions about this? Right. <clears throat> okay. So we can go on to text number 10. Oh, we now have a hand raised. Who is it? Sachinandana Vishwam Barbabu. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Raji. Uh, uh, in the last verse, uh, to answer to uh, Mataji, you were about having Vrindavan at our own home, at our own place, maybe like uh, give certain examples of eco village and all. So, uh, in this verse, uh, is explained uh, that impersonalists, they are impersonalists who see uh, everything the same, but actually, the family is sort of uh, categorizing or uh, giving a hierarchy of the family. So, it, it does mean that. Uh, I'm 
sir, your voice hasn't been very clear, Prabhu. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I'm not. Sir, we were talking. We were talking about creating uh, the environment of dham at uh, any place. Uh, we give certain examples of Goa and Eco Village, and we have uh, certain environment created uh, in the various uh, uh, temples like New Vrindavan and in which we, you gave the example, or even creating the environment at home. And simultaneously here, Shri Rupa Swami explains that we have a hierarchy of dham and being Radha Kund being the highest of them. So we just wanted to understand that uh, is how to, uh, is, is it possible to create the, those ambience at anywhere or um, we can just try for it and it depends on the mercy of the Lord. Well, it's possible by the grace of the devotees. It's the devotees, the presence of the devotees that make a holy place. So if the devotees are all in that mood of cooperating and creating that holy place there, then certainly it can be done. And I gave the example how Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasthati Prabhupada had created his own Govardhan Hill and Radhakund and Shamakund at the Yoga Peeth here in Mayapur. Now, of course, Mayapur is non different from Vrindavan. So, all the holy places are there in Mayapur. So, he personally he created his own Govardhan Hill and Radhakund and Shamakund. He said, this be, Let this be Govardhan Hill, let this be Radhakund, Shamakund. So, it can be done by the desire of the devotee. If the devotee really desires to create that holy place and he has that mood and the attachment to that particular holy place, then he can create the atmosphere of that place. Right? Uh, the will of the... Krishna is, ser Krishna is uh, uh, subservient to the desire of his devotees, the pure devotees. Yes? Yes, thank you, Maharaj Maharaj. And Maharaj, regarding Radha Kund being the, uh, the given in the hierarchy, Radha Kund being the highest, and then Goa's, and then the forest of Vrindavan and Matra Bhumi. So, uh, we see that, uh, uh, if, if I recall, Bhakti Siddhant Maharaj uh, did, didn't consider himself to be qualified to uh, stay in Radha Kund. I heard it somewhere. And uh, he said that it required certain qualification to stay in Radha Kund. And although we see like uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur had a Kutir in Radha Kund, and few other Vaishnavas had some uh, desire to live in Radha Kund, and even in the uh, uh, Govardhan Ashtam Nijnagat Nivasam Dehi Govardhan, that is Ravnadar uh, Sukhavi says. So is it like certain qualifications are required uh, for, I mean, uh, Obviously, you mentioned about Dham Vas, but I'm interested in inside the hierarchy also. It requires higher qualification to stay in higher place. Is it something like that? Well, I've, I've never heard Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthati Prabhupada say he was not qualified to stay in Radha Kund. I've never heard that before. I don't know where you got that from. I'm very I doubtful. I've heard it in the lecture, I, I recall. To have heard it in the lecture. Really? I'm the court of the soul. I remember hearing this. I, I know he did say that it was a place of neophytes because when he had got, given a lecture there, on one occasion he'd given a lecture there and he spoke on the Upanishads. And the people who came, the Babaji's who came, they left because they didn't want to hear lectures on the Upanishads. They wanted to hear Gopi Leela. They just wanted to hear Gopi Leela. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada said this, this, this you can understand the mentality of the Babaji's residing in Radha Kund, that they are not really very advanced, they are neophytes, because they are just only interested in hearing Gopi Leela. Now Bhakti Vinod Thakur did have a house there in Radha Kund, that house is still there, and sometimes Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would also stay there. Okay, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Srila Prabhupada personally did not like our devotees to go there. There was a case 
in the, ver in the early years of the Krishna Balaram Mandir, Prabhupada heard how one of the devotees had gone there to Radhakund. And Prabhupada sent a very senior devotee there, I think he was a sannyasi, he sent him there to bring him back. And he said, beg him to come back, tell him, no, I don't want him to stay there. So Prabhupada was very concerned in Vr Vrindavan and these places that we stay in our own ISKCON centers. He didn't like us to go off and wander around and get friendly with the other temples and local people because he worried that we may become polluted, we may learn things from them which are not, which Prabhupada didn't want us to know, which were not maybe proper. So Prabhupada was very cautious in protecting devotees because it was at the very early stages of our movement. So Prabhupada definitely knew devotees were neophyte and he wanted to protect us, he didn't want us to be influenced by all the other things, other people which are there in Vrindavan, who are quite different from what Srila Prabhupada was teaching and, and training us. Right? All right, we'll go ahead. Text number 10. We want a different person to chant text number 10 for us. Someone? Um, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu? Yes, Prabhuji. Karma Pyaha Parito Hare Priyataya Vyatting Yur Janin Nathnas Debhyo Gyana Vibhutta Bhakti Parama Prema Kranishta Stataha Debhya Statha Pashupal Pankaj Drishas Abhyopi Saradhika Prishta Tadvi Satya Tadiyasra Sarasi Tanak Ashayet Takaha Kritihi Okay, thank you Prabhu. Can you read the translation? Translation. In the Shastra, it is said that of all the types of fruity workers, he who is advanced in knowledge of the higher values of life is favored by the Supreme Lord Hari. Out of many such people who are advanced in knowledge, Jnanis, one who is particularly liberated by virtue of his, practically liberated by the virtue of his knowledge, may take to devotional service. He is superior to other others. However, one who has actually attained prema, pure love of Krishna, is superior to him. The gopis are exalted above all the advanced devotees because they are always totally dependent upon Sri Krishna, transcendental coward boy. Among the gopis, Srimati Radharani is the most dear to Krishna. Her kunda leg is in profoundly dear to Lord Krishna as this most beloved of the gopis, who then will not recite at Radha Kunda and in a spiritual body surcharged with aesthetic devotional feelings of Prakrita Bhava, tender loving service to the divine couple Sri Radha Govinda, who perform their Ashtakaliya Leela, their eternal eightfold daily pastimes. Indeed, those who execute devotional service on the banks of Radha Kunda are the most fortunate people in the universe. Thank you, Prabhu. So, text number 10 is describing here hierarchy of devotees. In the previous verse, we had hierarchy of holy places. Now we're hearing about a hierarchy among devotees. There are different devotees and they're on different levels, and some are on higher levels than others. So Rupa Goswami begins the verse by talking about fruit of workers, right? Fruit of workers mean karmis. And then higher than karmi is jnani, one who is advanced in knowledge. And among the jnanis, some, or one maybe, or maybe more than one, we don't know, we hope one at least, 
may become attached to devotional service. And of those who are attached to devotional service, then there are different pure devotees. And among the pure devotees of Krishna, the gopis are above all. And Rupa Goswami describes why. He said, because they are always totally dependent upon Sri Krishna, the transcendental cover boy. So, does, what does this dependence mean? Does this mean that they just simply depend on Krishna to give them everything, to give them food, to take care of them? They simply hold their hands out to Krishna, give me, you know? Just like, you know, a wife is dependent on her husband, the husband may go out to work and he has to bring the money home and take care of the wife. And so, here you have the gopis and it's written there, the gopis are totally dependent on Krishna. So what is this, what is this dependence? Can someone explain? Yes. Uh, well, this is just dependence is uh, something like what is explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Shikshashtam, Ashulashiva, Padaltam, Janashtamam. So, uh, what, whether Krishna accepts them or whether Krishna doesn't accept them, but they remain uh, completely dependent on them, on, on, on the mercy of Lord Krishna. And they are always attached to him. It is an unconditional and uh, un. Uh, what can say? They don't have any expectation in return, but they are always always uh, dependent on Krishna. Right. Okay. Yeah. They're not materially motivated to get some material benefit from Krishna. All right. They're totally dependent on. <coughs> on cultivating that loving relationship with Krishna. They're, they're ready to sacrifice everything for Krishna. Even their bodies, they're ready to give up their bodies for the pleasure of Krishna. And so among the gopis, the gopis are the best of the pure devotees, and among the gopis, there are different gopis, some some are more advanced than others. And among the gopis, Srimati Radharani is very special. She is most dear to Krishna. And similarly, her kunda, her lake, is also very dear to Lord Krishna. So then we are advised, go and live there and meditate on the pastimes of Radha Govinda, who performed their Astakaliya Lila, their eternal eightfold daily pastimes. So to do this kind of thing, you really have to be a very advanced devotee, you have to be very pure, to try to fix the mind on the different pastimes of Krishna, particularly this Astakaliya Lila. So we're encouraged to serve Krishna, use our physical bodies for the service of Krishna, and at the same time, within our mind, we think of Krishna. Right? We explained how Rupa Goswami, externally, he's chanting Hare Krishna and he's doing sadhana. He's doing all the activities of a sadhaka, performing parikrama and offering obeisances, worshipping the deed. But in, in the spiritual body, he is Rupa Manjari. And in, as Rupa Manjari, he can meditate on the pastimes of Krishna. Just like it's described, Asta Kaliya Lila, different times of the day, Krishna and Srimati Radharani will perform different activities. So some devotees, they spend the whole day just 
meditating, just remembering these activities. So Prabhupada begins a purport and he's talking about fruit of activity. He's talking about materialistic people who are engaged in all kinds of activities for the satisfaction of the senses. He talks also about Krishna's energy, how there are three different kinds of energy. I think we covered that before, right? You all know about that? So the material energy is considered to be third class energy, tritya shakti, third class energy. Who would like to tell me why the material energy is considered third class? Sachinandana Vishwama Prabhu, is that you wanting to answer the question there? Uh, no, uh, I had a question to uh, ask Maharaj. If it is... <laughs> you have a question on this verse? Yeah, yeah, from this classroom. Just what you, what you discussed, Maharaj. All right, let's hear it. Uh, Maharaj, as you were uh, giving an example how Shilani performed, he was extremely dense, Atma was intermixed, he was root manjari. Difference between the internal devotional services given by Srila Prabhupada and the internal meditation of maybe any Ravana. Yes, uh, Prabhupada gave us the instruction to distribute his books. Certainly, he wanted us to distribute our books. And he also gives us the instruction to remember Krishna. And never forget Krishna. And he also teaches us about the, the cultivating the mode of separation from Krishna, Vipralamba Seva, which we heard about, the mode of the gopis, and separation from Krishna, that Krishna has left us. So because Krishna had gone to Mathura, the gopis were feeling the pain of separation from Krishna. But that feeling of separation from Krishna was actually the ecstasy of the gopis. So we're encouraged to do this. As you said, uh, this book distribution is similar to the mood of the gopis. You said Rasa Lila. Well, I heard the mood of the gopis, that the mood of the gopis, that they try to give Krishna consciousness to others. The gopis arranged for Radharani to be with Krishna and their happiness is in seeing Radharani with Krishna. And Radharani, her happiness is in bringing gopis to be with Krishna. So they get the happiness by giving Krishna consciousness, by arranging for others to come into Krishna's association. So that's the pleasure of the devotee. And certainly Prabhupada encouraged the devotees. And the devotee wrote to Prabhupada and asked him about this and said, yes, you're right, this is right. This book distribution, preaching, giving Krishna consciousness to others is the mood of the gopis. So we're trying to cultivate that mood. At the same time, we do it by the physical activity of going out and preaching. We don't do it just sitting around and meditating, but we go out and distribute the books and talk to people and try to interest them in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada certainly never encouraged anybody to sit down and meditate. That, that, that is for 
people, very, very rare souls like these Goswamis, they were, you know, because they are, they're nature siddhas, you see, they're very perfected souls, they're perfected. We're not, per we're not perfect, we're on the path of perfection. And to come to the perfect stage, we need to engage in these activities, we need the physical activity. He said, Krishna consciousness is an activity, there has to be activities. So we engage in book distribution and sankirtan and preaching, and in this way our mind becomes purified and we become attached to Krishna. And as we become more attached to Krishna, then remembrance of Krishna will become easier. And with remembrance of Krishna, we'll think of Krishna's pastimes. Right? All right, so Prabhupada's talking about, oh, I'm muted again, oh, Krishna. Can you just repeat that? We lost you, your audio then for a moment. Am I back? You're back, yes. Oh, I was muted for a minute, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so... You, you asked a question before... Um... Oh yeah, I was asking a question. I wanted to know, like, why is the material energy considered third class energy? Okay. Why is the material energy considered a third class energy? So, can we go to Smriti Karuna, Mataji? You had your hand up a few times, I never got round to you. Sorry, I don't know if that was very clear. Did you did you hear that properly, Maharaj? Something about Krishna wouldn't be there. Ma Ma Mataji, can you can you just speak a little clearer and a little slower? It was a little fast. Yes, yes, Prabhupada. Thank you. Um, but I am saying that Sri Krishna never comes in contact with the material energy. And so wherever there is material energy, Krishna is not present there. So, that's... Doesn't Krishna come in the material... Doesn't Krishna come here? Didn't Krishna come to this world 5,000 years ago? Yes, Maharaj. Can, can, how, how can we say he doesn't come here? But Maharaj, uh, his body and his everything is spiritual. Mm. Anything is never ever material. Well, okay, he could, but it, that doesn't change anything about the material world. He is spiritual, yes, we know his body is spiritual, but spirit can come into the material world, right? Yes, Maharaj. We are also spirit souls, but we are in the material body. Now, Lord Krishna comes, he appears in this world, certainly his body is spiritual. But I don't think it changes anything about the material world. The material world is third class, Prabhupada said. How, how come, how, in what way, can, well, what would be second class and first class? Is there a second class, a first class? If this material world is third class, what is first class? What's the difference? Someone else? Yeah? Um, maybe Sham Shamakunda Prabhu? Thank you. Because this kind of energy makes us forget Krishna. Oh, material energy makes us forget Krishna. How does that happen? Because uh, uh, someone will pull to uh, the states of uh, Rajakuna and Tamakuna. Through the Rajaguna and Tamakuna. 
aren't we creating the Rajagun and Tamagun? Is, it, is that, is it, is Rajagun and Tamagun, is it always there in the material energy? Yes, always there. Yeah. But we influenced by this energy so that we can uh, forget Krishna. Okay. That's a, a good reason that the material energy does cover us, makes us forget. And what happens when we forget Krishna? Uh, this yes, that, that's good. Yeah, the, the threefold miseries are there. Threefold miseries. What are the threefold miseries? Adi Atmik, right? Adi Bhotik, Adi Bhotik, Adi Daivik, Adi Atmik. And then there's also, as you say, birth and death in yes. the material world. Right? All right. Anything else about the material? And Sri Garva Prabhu is commenting because the material energy is exploited or it. The material energy exploits by higher energy. I'm not quite sure what that meant. <laughs> material energy exploits. We're the one exploiting the material energy. Yes. We're, we're guilty of that. We're living entities, we come into the material world and we try to exploit the material energy for our sense gratification. We have to be very careful, cautious, how we use material energy. And Soumya Mataji is commenting that material energy is under the control of Maya Devi. All right, yes. And what's the nature of Maya Devi? What's she going to do? Anyone want to come in there? What about... Um, I just wanted to say that uh, Maharaj was talking about the first class, second class development of energies that uh, maybe the, we are, since we are marginal, we may be second class and, and, and the spiritual and, and, and then internal energy of Krishna which is first class. Okay. Yeah, sounds reasonable. We've got Murli Govinda Prabhu who is commenting that due to the influence of material energy, not only do we forget Krishna, but also our senses um, are aimed at our sensual pleasures only, which doesn't please Krishna. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu is commenting that when we come into contact with material energy, we identify ourselves with the false ego. Uh -huh. okay. Shruti Mishra also wants to comment that Maya Devi checks us and sees our eligibility. Are we perfect enough in devotion towards Krishna or not? Okay. <laughs> yes. So quite a few responses there. Yeah. Um, and also... Could you, would you take a comment from Har Harishwari Madhuri Mataji who has her hand raised there? Yes. Okay, Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So this material energy makes us forgetful of our position that we are eternal uh, uh, servants of Krishna. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we think that when we got this material energy, we think that we are controllers. So we want to enjoy and we want to control everything. Yes. All right. We come into the material world thinking we are the controller, we are the enjoyer. We're thinking that this is our kingdom. <laughs> we're the Lord here. 
So material energy creates that illusion, gives us that, uh, that opportunity to enter into a deep illusion, deep ignorance of our spiritual position. Okay, very good, nice responses. So then Srila Prabhupada talks about what happens under the jurisdiction of the material energy. Sometimes engage themselves like hogs and dogs, working very hard for sense gratification. So, and, and, however, after executing pious activities, some karmis become strongly attracted to performing various kinds of sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas. So what kind of people are these performing sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas? How would you describe them? A Krishna Vijay Prabhu. Like, they are called like Smarta Brahmanas? Mm, Smarta Brahmana. Maybe. Prunus Sindhu Prabhu is commenting karma kandya. Yes, I think that's the word. That's the word I think. Karma kandis. Right, karma kandis. They want to enjoy the results of their sacrifice and they think, you know, Vedic sacrifices also talk about that, going to higher planets and enjoying something, better life there. So that's the mood, that's the mentality, they're performing Vedic Yagas. So Prabhupada said, on the strength of their pious merit, they are elevated to heavenly planets. Actually, those who perform sacrifices strictly according to Vedic injunctions are elevated to the moon and planets above the moon. And then Prabhupada quotes Bhagavad Gita. Shini Punyi Markya Lokam Vishanti. When their piety runs out, when their punya is exhausted, then they come back, they fall down again. So such persons may be elevated to the heavenly planets by their pious activities. And although they try to enjoy life there for thousands of years, they nonetheless must return to the planet when the results of their pious activities are. This is the position of the karmis, including those who act piously and those who act impiously, right? Different kinds of karmis. Some karmis are pious and some are impious. So the impious ones, they don't bother about the Vedas, they're just working, they just try to get money and enjoy the results to do sinful activities. But the pious karmis, pious karmis, they're following the Vedas. Prabhupada writes here, Among the karmis are some vikarmis, people who act without the guidance of Vedic knowledge. Those who act on the basis of Vedic knowledge perform sacrifice for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu and to receive benedictions from Him. In this way, they are elevated to higher planetary systems. Such, such karmis are superior to the vikarmis, <laughs> right? Pious karmis are better than the sinful karmis, obviously. They are faithful to the direction of the Vedas and are certainly dear to Krishna. They're dear to Krishna, but they're not going, to, they won't go back to Godhead. So Prabhupada quotes Bhagavad Gita, I say surrender, I reward them according. Krishna is so kind, he can fulfill the desires of the karmis and jnanis, not to speak of the bhaktas. Although the karmis are sometimes elevated to higher planets, as long as they remain attached to fruitive activities, they must accept new material bodies after death. If one acts piously, he can attain a new body among the demigods in the higher planets. Or he may attain some other position in which he can enjoy a higher standard 
of material happiness. On the other hand, those who are engaged in impious activities are degraded and take birth as animals, trees and plants. Thus those fruitive actors who do not care for the Vedic direction, vikarnis, are not appreciated by learned, saintly persons. Then Prabhupada quotes Srimad Bhagavatam. Nunam pramita kuroke vikarma yadindriya pritai aprinoti nasadu manye yata atmano yam asanapi klesha da asha deha. Right? People, due to, they're, they're mad for sense gratification. And because their senses are not controlled, they engage in many sinful activities. Then, nasadu manye, that is not good, my friend. On, a, on account of all these sins, asanapi klesha da asadeha, they will have to take another material body which will simply give them so much misery. So material body means misery. One wants to get out of the material world. We want to get free of the material body. Unfortunately, fruitive workers are mad to earn money and acquire temporary material comforts by all means. Therefore, they risk being degraded to lower species of life. Oh. So Prabhupada has written quite a bit here about the karmis and their different activities. Mm. Materialists, they, Prabhupada said that they don't think about the next life, they're not thinking about the future birth, they're just engaging in sense gratification. They're so eager for sense gratification. But at the bottom of the page, one should therefore be eager to understand the science of the soul, Atma Tattva. Unless one comes to the platform of Atma Tattva, by which one understands the soul, not the body is oneself, one remains on the platform of ignorance. And out of thousands of, even millions of ignorant people who are wasting their time, simply gratifying the senses, one may come to the platform of knowledge. So that's the verse in Bhagavad Gita also. Bahunam Gyanmanamante Gyanabam Mam Prapajante. Oh quoted over here at the bottom of the page. You see? After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge will surrender to Krishna, Vasudev, such a soul is very rare. Hmm? So Prabhupada talks about the, the karmis, and then he comes to speak about the jnani. Jnani is considered superior to a karmi because he at least refrains from blind activities of sense enjoyment. Right? The jnani, he's frustrated with trying to enjoy the material world. He's given up the desire to try to enjoy the material world. He's taken to the path of knowledge. And of course the goal of knowledge, thinking, liberation. Although a jnani may be liberated from the ignorance of the karmis, unless he comes to the platform of devotional service, he is still considered to be in ignorance, avidya. So the goal of knowledge is to come to devotional service. One may be accepted as a jnani or advanced in knowledge. His knowledge is considered impure because he has no information of devotional service. So he, he does not worship Krishna. He just think only knowing, what does he know? He only knows about Gyan, he knows about the body, he's not the body, he's the soul. What kind of knowledge do they have? They, they know about the material world, the place of suffering, Mrityu Loka, the planet of death. 
So when a they don't know about Krishna, but when a jnani takes to devotional service, he rapidly becomes superior to an ordinary jnani. Such an advanced person is described as jnana vimukta bhakti para parama. Bhakti Parama, Supreme Devotee, Jnana Vimukti Bhakti Parama. How a Jnani takes to devotional service is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. And then proper quotes of verse I just recited. So the wise person surrenders to Krishna. We come to devotional service. And we practice regulative principles. A person may come to the platform even of spontaneous love of Godhead, following in the footsteps of great devotees like Narad and Sanaka and Sanatan. Then the Supreme Personality of Godhead recognizes him to be superior. The devotees who have developed love of Godhead are certainly in an exalted position, right? So from karmi you become jnani, jnani is better, and from the jnani you have to become devotee. And then among the, the devotees, the gopis are recognized as superior because they do not know anything other than satisfying Krishna. So here, you can see it's worded differently from how it was in the verse. In the verse it was says, the devotees are completely dependent on Krishna. And here it says, the, the gopis don't know anything other than satisfying Krishna. So their dependence on Krishna is to satisfy him, for his satisfaction, not for their satisfaction. Nor do the gopis expect any return from Krishna. A very important point, why the gopis are the best of all devotees. We know sometimes people will come and worship Krishna. They want to get something from Krishna. They're expecting something in return. But the gopis, they don't want anything. They're happy just to serve Krishna. And they cannot forget Krishna. Sometimes Krishna separates himself from them, sometimes he disappears, and sometimes the gopis are hearts are breaking. When Krishna left Vrindavan to go to Mathura, Akrura had come, sent by Kamsa to take the gopis, to take Krishna and Balaram there. The gopis wouldn't let Krishna go. They were crying. Mother Yasoda was also crying. They were all in separation from Krishna. But then Prabhupada said that this means that in one sense they were never actually separated from Krishna. Would someone explain that? Chandra Vamshi Prabhu, yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So the gopis are always uh, in the on the mood of separation. So in the mood of separation, they are always connected to Krishna. Viraha Bhava. Just, just one moment there. He just had to move away from his desk for a moment. Here he is. <laughs> what was that? How so did Chandra Vamshi Prabhu, please just repeat what you said. Danot uh, Maharaj. So. The, the, the gopis are always in, in a 
separation they connected to krishna in the viraha bhava so the the viraha bhava is the highest form so they are connected to krishna can you explain what is this viraha bhava so when krishna when sometimes krishna moves away from them and they they always uh, in their thoughts and in their activities and uh, every everything they just you know like talk about krishna and all that so in that way they always connected to krishna okay so is that this viraha bhava is this any different from vipralamba seva I I believe it's the same, Maharaj. Yes. Okay. So we're using the term vipralamba seva here. Prabhupada used this term vipralamba seva to describe the thinking of Krishna in separation. Right. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. So Prabhupada is written, in one sense, they were never actually separated from Krishna. Of course, Krishna is in their heart. So Krishna is always with them. In fact, it's even said that when Krishna went to Mathura, he didn't actually leave Vrindavan, but he actually hid himself in the hearts of all the gopis, in the hearts of the devotees there in Vrindavan because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So Krishna, uh, he, you know, from the manifest form, he became unmanifest and he hid himself in the hearts of the gopis. So no difference between thinking of Krishna and associating with him. Thinking, so thinking of Krishna and associating with him are the same thing. If we're thinking of Krishna, it's as good as associating with him. Krishna is there. Of course, we have to appreciate the inconceivable potency of Lord Krishna, that he's everywhere and he's in everything. So if we're thinking of him, then we can actually also understand that Krishna is with us and he, he's guiding us and taking care of us. And we, our duty is to serve him, not just to take service, but to give service. Right? Try to, uh, Prabhupada encouraged us, don't try to see Krishna, but act in such a way that Krishna would want to come and see you. I think that was the words of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. That try to act in such a manner that Krishna will want to come and see you. So, this way, if, if we are actually serving Krishna and thinking of Krishna, then Krishna will be inclined to come and to associate, to see us, and to encourage us, and to help us. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers they all cultivated this mood of vipralamba seva. Indeed, that, that is the mood of the gopis. The gopis serve Krishna in separation. Not by choice, but by force, right? Krishna left them. Krishna had gone to Mathura, and Krishna had hid himself. And so the gopis, the mood of the gopis, we, we, sometimes we sing the Goswami Astikam, so it said the Goswamis were always engaged in the mood of the gopis. So the mood of the gopis is vipralamba seva, service in separation from Krishna. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the, and the other, his followers, they all cultivated that mood. They followed in the footsteps of the gopis. And Prabhupada says here, he said, Rather, Vipralamba Seva, thinking of Krishna in separation, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did, is far better than serving Krishna directly. Oh, 
That's surprising, isn't it? That it's far better than serving Krishna directly. Thus all the devotees who have developed unalloyed devotional love for Krishna, the gopis are most exalted. And out of all these exalted gopis, Srimati Radharani is the highest. No one can excel the devotional service of Srimati Radharani. So, would anyone like to comment about this? How could we understand that this, the devotees who are serving uh, Krishna in separation, that this is better than directly serving Krishna? Oh, Maharaj, we've got a couple of hands raised, um, mm. but I don't know if they want to ask questions or <clears throat> um, they want to comment on this. Um, so, can I go to Krishna Vijay Prabhu? Krishna Vijay Prabhu, was that a question or do you want to comment on this first? Uh, I wanted to comment uh, uh, the question Maharaj asked in the Vrita Ramya Seva, the yeah. of peace. Uh, actually, I remember in Prabhupada mentioning the Krishna book, uh, in the, one of the chapters, maybe Akura when visiting Vrindavan or Uddha was visiting Vrindavan, that Krishna never left, Krishna and Maranam never left Vrindavan. Um, only uh, the, in their expansion, Prabhava and Vaibhava form, Vasudeva and Sankrashan, they went to Mathura. And Krishna and Maranam stayed back in Vrindavan in their Bhava state, in you know, a Bhava, in the form of the Bhava. And gopis were always uh, like feeling ecstasy because Krishna is present you know, there in the bhava form and they kept and they were enjoying Krishna's leelas pastimes constantly so that that comments I wanted to share okay thank you Prabhu okay then it will like a clip for Mataji Maharaj, this is like Prabhupada has given one analogy about how uh, a woman, she sort of tries to like to please her paramour, she does the work like in her grasta life or she does all the work very nicely and to meet like uh, to serve her paramour life uh, and does the complete seva for him. Then, She's, in other words, she doesn't want her husband to know she has a paramour. Yeah. So she's so very she does, careful. Yeah, she to she do does all the work uh, very enthusiastically, very nicely, so that uh, she's not caught or she's not uh, being. Hmm. Uh, so, how does this relate to uh, the devotee serving Krishna in separation? Oh, you're saying that the, the wife is like uh, the devotee serving in separation? Yes. yes because yes. she will think more. Yes, more of her, uh, this one, how to uh, go and meet him or how to uh, like, uh, be with him. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, Prabhupada did, did give that example that. In separation just like the wife she doesn't want her husband to know that she has a paramour so she does everything very well and so then if then in this case you say the devotee they're doing their sadhana and they're in separation from Krishna they're thinking of Krishna they'll be doing their sadhana very well very carefully All right, thank so you. We've got, we've got quite a number of hands up here. Oh, good. Let me hear from them. Okay, so let's go then first to Jagai Nithai. You haven't spoken for a while. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, service and separation, the, the uh, devotee, the person is much more anxious and the intense, the feelings are much more intense. And so in such a state, that devotee is hankering after Krishna much more than Krishna, like the gopis, than Krishna being present uh, before them. And so that state of devotion is much 
much higher, more elevated because of that hankering for Krishna. Yes, very nice, yes. Yeah, very good reasoning. The devotee's consciousness will be very focused and attached, very strongly attached to Krishna in separation. Yes? Then Maharaj Murli Govinda Prabhu has commented on the chat that gopis had risked their lives and as per the traditions in vogue at that time, they would never come back to their homes also. They are prepared to give up everything for pleasing Krishna and he says this is in the context of gopis leaving everything when they hear Krishna's flute and participate in the rasa dance because they could not tolerate even a moment of separation from him. <laughs> yes. Um, and then... Um, so is, uh, uh, is that like, on, uh, is, that is like one occasion or if I thought Krishna is calling the gopis every night to <laughs> rest a little. No, of course, there's particular days on the full moon, the Sarat Purnima, like that, special nights when Krishna will have Rasa Lila. It's yeah. not, not every night. Mm. Um, and can we go to Ananda Lila Mataji as well? He had your hand raised a while back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it somewhat got covered uh, that when, when, oh, it's the Vipralamba Bhava. Uh, when the, when Krishna is not actually present, like, uh, uh, the thoughts um, and our and the mind is more focused. Uh, sometimes even when Krishna is present, mind might go somewhere else. Though he is there standing, low, you know, like though we are hearing Bhagavatam or the deities are in front of us, but still the mind might go somewhere else and think um, of something else even while chanting, but actually when we are not with Krishna and thinking about him and doing something, so that's, that is more connecting and we are more closer to Krishna. Yes, we, we have a common saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> you know, when, when you're with someone all the time, and we say familiarity breeds contempt. But absence makes the heart grow fonder, so that mood of separation increases the longing of the devotee to be with Krishna. And the hankering, the, the, the hankering for Krishna, that also leads to un, union with Krishna. There has to be a union, union with Krishna. It's not always in separation, but that separation must lead to coming together with Krishna, to being with Krishna. All right? Um, you've still got one, two, three, four people who want to comment, and then there's a comment on the chat box from Harsha Janwani Madhaji. Okay, let's hear the four, the four people who want to comment. Let's hear. Okay. Um, Let's go then to um, Ananta Vilasa Prabhu. Yes, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So this, actually, I remember two pastimes in connection with this. One from Krishna's pastime where he sent Uddhava uh, to, to Vrindavan to, to actually see the love of the gopis. And then he actually, Krishna sent Uddhava to, to learn the love of the gopis in the separation. So Uddhava could intensely see how much the go he was thinking he's great, but seeing this love in separation, he truly understood practically how, how much they are in separation they are and serving Krishna in that mood of separation. Yes, yes, thank you. Very nice, yes. Krishna sent Uddhava. And, and the second analogy I would like to say is about Mahaprabhu. Even Mahaprabhu, when uh, he uh, he wanted to go to Vrindavan, but every time he got deviated from his path uh, from Vrindavan, every time he got deviated, once in Nityanand Prabhu, then once in Shantipur, and so many times he got deviated, and then he, went, he, he was in Puri, and we know in Alalnath also how much mood of separation he was, which he exemplified that uh, he, he showed devotional ecstasies in this mood of separation. So these both pastimes. Mm. All right. 
Yes, certainly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt ecstasy. We can see the stones melted there in Alanath on the floor. And due to the contact with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body, say that the stones had actually melted at some point. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. And yes, thank you. Okay, and then let's go to Krishna Vijay Prabhu. I heard this uh, phrase like um, when there is a union, there is a separation. Union in separation, in separation in union. When there is a like in union, there is separa separation. Is what follows is separation, and when there is a separation, intense separation. Like somebody already explained that uh, because here when you have feeling of separation, the intensity is too high. So that uh, uh, the, when the intensity too high, which ultimately leads to union, and this what uh, the mood of the gopis when they were feeling too much separation from Krishna, the intensity was too high. So that uh, to also relish that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, you know, wanted to show this in Jagannath Puri, you know, that Vipralamba Bhava, how it is the highest among other uh, bhavas. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Chaitanya. Um, and that, sorry, Maharaj. Yeah, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu certainly endorsed this Vipralamba Seva, this mode of concentration of the mind in that mode of separation to Krishna. And he was cultivating, of course, the mode of Srimati Radharani. So this is also the mode of all the gopis, including Srimati Radharani. Yes, some more hands are there? Yeah, um, then Sachinandan Vishwambar Prabhu has would like to comment but also has a question uh -huh. okay probably go ahead uh, shall i give the question like comment or shall i ask the question first comment first okay uh so regarding the comment uh, i was just thinking uh in vipralamha bhava one is it is higher because uh, the uh, union it may not be always present it uh, being uh, may not be always uh, with the devotees union may not be always, but uh, uh, if Krishna is not with the devotee and then too uh, the devotee is uh, having uh, um, the feeling of uh, serving Krishna in separation, that has to be higher than that. This is the comment. I'm giving class. I'm not free. Uh, shall I repeat it? Yes, please. Uh, uh, regarding the comment, it was that the union may not always be there. It may not always be at every moment. Uh, but then if uh, the devotee is having a feeling of serving Krishna, uh, even in when union is not there, which is Rupila Mahabhava, then that has to be higher because it is it, it can always remain with the devotee. All right. Yes. Okay. Good point. Yes. And what's the question? Uh, Maharaj, I was just uh, uh, trying to understand from the purpose. Uh, that Shri Prabhupada has explained the various categories of devotees. So, uh, the, uh, trying to understand it, clarify uh, my understanding a bit more and then a few questions. First, regarding the karmis and the jnanis, Shri Prabhupada explained that karmis will do every activity for uh, uh, their material benefit and for sense gratification. But the jnani will refrain from uh, the abominable activity, but he will do some karma for sure. He will not only be uh, uh, satisfied with the jnani. He will do karma, but he will distinguish that there are certain bias activities and there are certain impious activities. Is that understanding correct? Uh. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, certainly, of course, he's a, the jnani has to do some kind of activity, can't stop all activities. But his focus is more cultivating knowledge and working towards liberation. He has no material desire. And so some minimum basic activities will be there to maintain the body. That's all. 
just simply for bodily maintenance. Generally, jnanis, you know, that, that, that should be the mode of a jnani. More interested in what? More interested in liberation. Yes. His goal is liberation and just to maintain the body will do some Yeah, he has no material desire. Right. He's, well, of course it's a material, you could say his liberation is material. But he's, he's not interested in sense gratification. He's given up all attempts of sense gratification in the material world. And he's thinking about you know, the goal of knowledge. He's thinking knowledge to get out of the world. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, uh, so Maharaj, the question regarding this thing, I was just trying to categorize myself, maybe, or maybe any other devotee. Uh, uh, I was just trying to categorize it. And uh, the question is that where does one fit in? Because it feels that uh, I have certain taste, uh, certain traces of creative activity. I have desire for that. I have desire for material enjoyment. Simultaneously, there is certain traces of dhyan, uh, or maybe I just want to uh, get above it. And then there is a taste for devotion service also, devotion activities also. So uh, just how does uh, where, where does one fit in? Is, the, is it like a mixture of everything inside one? And uh, so, uh, yeah, Shila Prabhupada. Uh, how uh, and then another question, uh, following up question then for that would be how how is it uh, how is the Shila Prabhupada movement or the Krishna consciousness movement elevating one from Jnana or to uh, to the Shuddha Prem or to that to the Lamba Bhav? Is it like? Uh, Directly, it is uh, by Sri Chet Mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's the direct love of Krishna is given to even the third class people like me who are, who are interested in karma, so, uh, all, all sense enjoyment and all. So, uh, is it uh, by the great mercy of Mahaprabhu, one directly gets elevated from the platform of karma to Shri Prem? Uh, how does it happen? Yes, certainly. If we receive the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if we have a taste for the chanting of the holy name and taking up the missionary activities of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or just simply the mood of being a servant of Krishna, then we lose our, our desires for material sense gratification are gradually reduced. Not immediately, it's going to take some time, but practice. You go on, you go through the stages as we described. Faith brings you to association, then you perform the activities, you get initiation, then you have to go through the anartha nivritti. So you're really at the stage of anartha nivritti, removing the material desires from the heart. And this is the most uh, absorbing, this is the most demanding probably of all the stages. It's quite a difficult stage to get rid of all the aparads and the anarthas, to remove all of these things from the heart so that we can go on to cultivate pure devotional service. Yeah? Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. So it, it is like a devotee in Eskom, he, he may have a picture of all these karmis, or karmi, uh, jnani and devotional service. He may have a mixture of everything. We cannot, like, uh, any devotee, just well, our, our knowledge is in relation to Krishna. So it's not that we're cultivating jnana like the jnani. The jnani, his knowledge will be more about the Brahman and you know, the idea of impersonal liberation. You know, our cultivation of knowledge is in relation to Krishna. And similarly also our work, our activities are also somewhat connected to Krishna that we're maintaining the body. We have to maintain the body for Krishna's service. So you have to do some work, you have to do some activities, you have to have some interest. To, you know, how are you going to get income to maintain your life so that you can serve Krishna? So it's all connected to Krishna. It doesn't have to be separate from Krishna. Mm -hmm. The karmi, general, we heard karma, there's kar, different kinds of karmis. Some karmis are sinful, and other karmis, they're following the Vedas, they're thinking about going to heaven. 
and they do the Vedic yagyas. You know? Are you doing that? No, no. No, no, of that course. Is not the goal of this. Right, yeah. So you, we have to work. It doesn't mean you're a karmi, but you're working so that you can practice your bhakti yoga. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's all in relation to Krishna. All right? So we, anybody else's hand is up? Uh, Chaitanya Chandra Prasad Prabhu has, I think it might be a question, I'm not sure, Maharaj. And also we, we have about nine minutes left. Okay. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I have a doubt. Like as you mentioned, this liberation, it's not a sense gratification. But is it not a sense gratification? It's, they're looking for their own benefits only. Yes. I, yeah, I corrected myself. I said, well, it's also material, really, the liberation. Because it, that's the idea of merging into the Brahman, becoming one with the Supreme, it's just like sense gratification. But it's not of the material world, it's somewhere beyond the material world. But it's the ultimate sense gratification of becoming one with the Supreme, <laughs> right? So you, you're correct, there is, it, there is the mode of sense gratification there, which is, but it's different from gratifying our senses of the material body. It's more related to the mind, because the idea of the impersonal liberation is to stop everything. They want to stop all the activity. One is connected to this, this question, like sometimes also we a devotee, we also think like we have also gone to the end of life and go to back to God. So is it uh, one way of like sense gratification? Because we also, like ourselves, one way of liberation only, from this material bondage we are looking for. Well, the mood of a devotee is we are dependent on Krishna, what Krish whatever Krishna wants, wherever Krishna puts us. You know, it's up to Krishna. If he wants us to go back to Godhead, or if he wants us to take birth some other place, we don't mind. We just want to serve Krishna. Wherever we go, it will be for Krishna's service. So it doesn't matter so much whether we go back to Godhead or we stay here, but the main thing is we should be in the association of devotees. Sometimes Prabhupada would speak about, you know, you don't, don't ask for uh, going back to Godhead. And other times Prabhupada would tell devotees why you want to come back. I remember there was one lady, uh, she had got some disease and she had, was dying, leaving her body. And she told Prabhupada, she had met Prabhupada and she said to Prabhupada, I just want to come back and distribute your, your books, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada looked at her and said, you don't have to do that. He said, just go back to Godhead. <laughs> so it was interesting, you know. But other times Prabhupada would say, you know, why you want to go back to Godhead? You know, you just simply, just simply leave it, that up to Krishna. It's up to Krishna to decide who goes back to Godhead. It's not that if, if we're simply thinking about ourselves going back to Godhead, then it can become, you know, our, our sense gratification that we want to get we want to enjoy the spiritual world. So we shouldn't have that mood of enjoying. The mood should be surrender. Whatever Krishna wants, wherever Krishna puts me. Is that all right? Thank you, Maharaj. So where are we, Krishna Keshava? So, um, we're at 10.24. Okay, um, we can just finish. There's only a small section. Yes, please. No one can excel the devotional service of Srimati Radharani. Indeed, even Krishna cannot understand the, the intimate, the, the attitude of Srimati Radharani. Therefore, he took her position and appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this way, Rupa Goswami gradually concludes that Srimati Radharani is the most exalted devotee of Krishna and that her kund, Radha kund, is the most exalted place. 
And then quotation from Lago Bhagavatamrita quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Just as Srimati Radharani is dear to Lord Krishna, so her bathing place is equally dear to Krishna. Among all the gopis, she stands supreme as the Lord's most beloved. Therefore, everyone interested in Krishna consciousness should ultimately take shelter of Radha Kund and execute devotional service there throughout one's life. This is the conclusion of Rupa Goswami in the 10th verse, Upadesha Amrita. So, in conclusion, would someone like to say, why are the gopis the best of all the devotees of Krishna? Someone? So, gopis are always dependent on Krishna for whatever thing. So, everything they do for Krishna only. So, uh, they always think of Krishna, how to serve him better. They're always thinking of Krishna. They're always trying to thinking about serving Krishna. Yes. Anything else? And they're always dependent on Krishna. Yes, they're Krishna. dependent on Krishna. And remember, they don't expect anything in return. Their service is not motivated. You know, in the material world, we're thinking, will I get this? Will I get a spiritual body? Will I get free of birth and death? But the gopis, they don't care. They just want to please Krishna. Remember the past time Krishna had a headache? He, need, he wanted the dust from the feet of the devotees. And the brahmanas didn't want to give it. They thought, we won't, oh, we'll, it will be an offense. We, will, we won't go back to Godhead. But the gopis, they gave the dust. They said, we don't care what happens to us. We only care about Krishna's headache. So that's the mood of the gopis. They just want to please Krishna. They don't worry about themselves. They're not thinking what I'm going to get. Right? Yes, Maharaj. And what about Srimati Radharani? Why is she considered the best of all the gopis? Because she is... Always, I mean, her devotion is on the topmost level of all the, all the other gopis. And uh, uh, she constantly thinks about Krishna only, whatever she does. She is always in the mood of Krishna. So whenever, even when Krishna, uh, when he left uh, for Mathura and uh, when Uddhava was sent to uh, Radha and with the special message for them, for the gopis. So, Uddhava could see that how uh, she is always remember she is scolding Krishna that you left me, you are uh, not like in different ways she scolds. But then when the uh, bumblebee, when he hides away from the Radharan, then she will be uh, more concerned that oh no, don't go away and tell Krishna. Like, she, even in that state also she is worried that she is about Krishna, she is thinking about Krishna. Okay. She's not thinking that Krishna has just me and uh, is gone for the life. Yeah, like staying in the palace and all that thing. Mm, very nice. He's still in that condition is thinking that Krishna should not be hurt. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to add anything about Srimati Radharani or the gopis? Sinandana Vishwambar has his hand raised. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Radharani's love is uh, for Krishna is the highest. And because even to understand Radharani's love, Krishna has to come in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he also was not able to understand what is the uh, devotion and love of Radharani. That's why he has to incarnate in a yugal avatar of Srimati Radharani and Krishna. He took the bow of Krishna in order to understand it. So therefore, the truth is uh, her love for Krishna is the highest and her devotion for Krishna is the highest. Uh -huh. Anybody else is there? So, yeah, Chandravam Shri Prabhu is saying Radharani's mood is to bring everyone closer to Krishna. Uh -huh. uh, and then you have Indraleka Kripa Mataji as well. 
Very good, yes. She gives the greatest pleasure to Krishna. Right? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So, yes, it's a very good point, Maharaji. I, I, I think, thank you for bringing that up, that she can give the greatest pleasure to Krishna. That's why Krishna loves her so much, that he's so attracted by her, that she gives him so much pleasure. So Lord Krishna is so attracted to her. And of course, when she sees Krishna attracted to her, then what happens? You know, just like when a woman sees that a man is attracted to her, then what happens to the woman? She becomes more attractive to Krishna. She, she tries to give more pleasure. Yeah, she feels... She she fe more, to give more pleasure. And she feels pleasure herself. She's feeling greater pleasure. Greater pleasure, yes. Yeah. So, Srimati Radharani, when she sees that Lord Krishna is attracted to her, she feels greater pleasure. She's getting more pleasure than Krishna. And this is why Krishna wants to come in the mood of the devotee, to experience the happiness, the bliss, which Srimati Radharani is having. Hmm. Okay, very good, very nice discussions. Yes. So I think we could stop here today. Yes, indeed. Um, we have one question. Would you take it from Sri Gopakumar Prabhu? Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, my question is not from today's session, but the previous session. But can I ask? All right, yes. Uh, Maharaj, my question is, when in previous uh, session we discussed about that uh, Guru Parampara and uh, Siksha Guru and Diksha Guru. And our, uh, like, Gaurkishwar Das Babati Maharaj accept uh, Makhinur Thakur as a Guru. As a, he, is, he was not a Diksha Guru. He was only the Siksha Guru. So what is the difference between Siksha Guru and Diksha Guru? Like what is the importance that like Diksha Guru and Siksha Guru? That I'm really confused with. You didn't take the disciple course? No, I took a disciple course, but generally we discussed this previous I was little confused more of Okay. So Diksha Diksha generally we first of all take Shiksha. And then later on we take Diksha. And we select one of the Shiksha Gurus to give us Diksha. You can have many Shiksha Gurus, but you can only have one Diksha Guru. So the, the Diksha Guru will give the name and he will give the beads. And the Shiksha Guru, he will give instructions as well. So many of the duties parallel, the Diksha Guru and the Shiksha Guru, they're both giving instructions and helping us to progress, but the Diksha Guru is the one who gives the name and uh, the beads and like that. But uh, if, if Shiksha Guru is more important, because they, in our Parampada, are, they accept as a Shiksha Guru more. They didn't accept that. Yes, because the Shiksha Guru is usually more present and he's there to help in all the little details which go on in devotional service. Often we find the one who's giving Diksha, he's not available very much. He's a world traveler or preacher or something. You know, you don't hardly get a chance to see them, difficult to talk to them. Even you send them a letter, they may not answer, you know. And because they're so busy, they've got so many disciples and so many things to do. 
but the Shiksha Guru is the one who helps you with all the details of your devotional service, all of the intricacies which are there in our devotional service. And he will help you, you know, how to wear your dhoti properly, how to, how to put on tilak, you know, you have problem maybe in the home, he can help listen to the problem at home, what's happening with the family. You know, he, he's willing to maybe give a bit more help and guidance there than you may get from the Diksha Guru. Not always, but maybe like that. But just generally we say, you know, you should have Shiksha Gurus as well as a Diksha Guru. Now, we have, the, we have the shelter of the, not only the Diksha Guru, but we have the shelter also of Srila Prabhupada, who is the Shiksha Guru for everyone. And we have the shelter of all of the other disciples of Srila Prabhupada. And, and even disciples of disciples of Prabhupada, who may be senior devotees. So they give us shelter and they're there to guide us. We want to take advantage of their shelter. Very important. Now, if, you think, if you're thinking only the Guru, only my Diksha Guru, that's a problem. It's not good. Because you don't know what's going to happen to your Diksha Guru. You know, we're, they get old, we get old, we die, we leave the body. What are you going to do? Who's going to guide you? You have some problems, you want some advice, who's going to be there? You need to have Shiksha Gurus. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam, for clearing it out. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for a nice class again. So, um, just a quick announcement. Tomorrow we do have a class, Saturday, same time, 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. It's the last class um, on the nature of instruction with the Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashana Simha Swami. But fear not, because we're going to see him again later on in the course. Um, so we're very, very lucky. <laughs> Um, he's going to be with us for Bhagavad Gita Unit 3, is that correct, Marge? Yes. Yes, so Unit 3. Late um, January. In late January, right? So a few weeks to go, but um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, tomorrow, please make sure you're all here. On t Can I just ask for one big favour? There's quite a lot of people turning up a little late, and some of them quite significantly. I'm not going to call any names out. Please, 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 can I ask you to be on time for class? Because it's actually quite distracting for the speaker when names keep coming off and on the board. Okay, so um, it's very important that we do turn up on time for class. Um, so please make sure we're all on time going forwards. Um, I think Shloka test, pretty much everybody's cancelled their test of the day. Is there anybody who's coming for the... Um, recitation today, or are you just going to upload? Um, I, uh, Prabhu, I think uh, I will upload it tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, Fine. So get the free time for me. Fine. Well, that means I've got um, some time to mark papers from another batch today, which will give me a little bit of time. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so uh, once uh, again, thank you. regarding the open book assessment, uh, uh, yes. can you also please uh, give, give the detail for that? Uh, I already have, yes? Yes, 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 you already have. Is it the last day is tomorrow or...? No, the last day is the 5th, the 23rd, uh, uh, 23.59. Um, so I mentioned that already, the 5th, Saturday, the 5th of December. That's the, that's the final deadline for that. Okay, regarding that essay which you... Yes. Is December wrong? Yes, December. Okay, that's perfect. I did, I did put this out on the group as well, so keep an eye on the messages on the, on the group, yeah? When will be the closed book? The closed book test will be next Saturday. Um, I'm going to announce that tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay, all right, let's, let's get off the line then, because it's getting on. Um, 